Donald Trump hates animals. That's a weird thing to have to talk about, right? I mean, he's the president, what does it matter what he thinks about animals? But it turns out that his suspicion of all things that crawl and fly and swim through the oceans actually influences government policy in a way that's bad, not just for animals in America, but all around the globe. And his weird issues with animals, even the most unobjectionable ones, like dogs, seeps into his rhetoric in a way that you might have noticed, I certainly have. I, I took a look over his social media feed over the past couple of years and take a look at the way that he talks about animals. He said that Michael Wolf, an author, was dumped like a dog. He said that Mitt Romney choked like a dog. General McChrystal got fired like a dog. General Kelly let an employee go, he was firing that dog. You'll be surprised to find out that when it's a woman, it's not an analogy, she literally is a dog. A union leader was kicked out of a debate like a dog, and Brent Bozell was begging for money like a dog. Now I got news for you, none of those are expressions in the English language. He's just making up weird ways that dogs are the villain. I don't really understand it, but it also gets into his policy in the EPA as well. So let's talk a little bit about the Endangered Species Act. So we'd announce, but we could bring this up, the Wildlife Foundation. On Monday, the US Fish and Wildlife Service and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration announced they were pushing through changes to the Endangered Species Act that will, in effect, weaken protections for species and possibly give industry more leeway to develop areas where threatened animals live. And that's where it goes far beyond just rhetoric. And it starts to affect actual animals in the real world. This is a change that had been previewed some time ago, and a lot of responsible environmentalists, politicians, attorneys general have been fighting against it, but it looks like it's actually going to happen. And so let's talk about the Endangered Species Act and why it's so important. Since its passage back in 1973, it's been credited with helping the rebound of the bald eagle, the grizzly bear, the humpback whale, and many other species living throughout the US. About 83% of Americans, including a large majority of conservatives, support it. According to the US Fish and Wildlife Service, the act has prevented the extinction of 99% of the species it protects. And so right there, that's three different ways that this should be a third rail in American politics. No politician on either side should be working to destroy this act. It has not only saved some of the most iconic animals in our country, including literally the symbol of the US government in the bald eagle. Almost everyone supports it, 83% is as popular as literally anything is in this country. And it is incredibly successful in doing what it aims to do. When they say this species needs to be protected and they add those legal regulations, it protects 99% of them. And so. Popular, effective, and even tied in with American iconography in a way that few laws actually are. And yet, this is where Donald Trump is striking next. So now let's talk about some of the ways that they're gonna be changing the act in the ways that they're gonna effectively be neutering it. So currently, species that are listed as threatened are defined as any species which is likely to become endangered within the foreseeable future. Threatened is a designation that's less severe than endangered. The new rules constrain what is meant by foreseeable future and give significant discretion in interpreting what that means. And so I just wanna ask you, as one reasonable person to another reasonable person, when deciding what the foreseeable future is for the elimination of a species, who should be deciding that? Should it be scientists? Or should it be the corporations that are looking to exploit an area? I mean, honestly, who thinks that corporations can be given that responsibility? Who thinks that they will actually balance, balance their legal requirement to maximize profits with the continued existence of an individual species? Nobody actually thinks that. Not me, not you, not the people who are changing these regulations. They're just doing it because they care far more about corporate profits than the continuation of species like the grizzly bear, the bald eagle. You can see rhinos over there. All sorts of species, obviously that's not a concern in the United States. Um, but we are, we, we set the precedent in this area. When we take it seriously, other people take it seriously. These ripples go far outside of our own borders. Now let's talk uh, now about a little bit more, some of the changes they're making. Until now, the agencies that enforce the ESA have had to base their decisions on whether to protect a species based solely on scientific data, quote, without reference to possible economic or other impacts of such determination. The new rule removes that phrase. Which is, that is the most Trump administration thing I've seen perhaps in the past couple of years. Before, they had this crazy idea that when crafting legislation designed to make sure that these species don't go extinct, you base your decisions on the interests of the animal and not on corporate profits. And they're saying, damn it all, we care about the profits. And so if you're thinking about whether or not this is gonna wipe out a bird or a woodchuck or whatever, 
you get to factor in the interests of your shareholders. And you get to think about what effect this will have on dividends and all of that. It seems absurd, but that is what they're doing. They're saying all of these iconic species that we have just come to, we just accept that they're gonna be there forever. They might not be so that a share price can go up marginally for one quarter. I know that we're not supposed to, in American politics, it's considered rude to assert that the other side is immoral in some fashion or is willing to do things many people would interpret as evil just for economic interests. But that is literally now being written into the rule. And here is why this is so important. We're not just in the horrible situation we were in back in 1973 when the Endangered Species Act was passed. We're in a far, far worse situation when it comes to biodiversity and the future of these sorts of species, both inside of the United States and around the world. We had issues back in 1973. Certainly, but now we have all of the other issues that have been added through the climate crisis that we're experiencing. And there are far more threats to these species than there were just a half century ago. And that makes it so horrible that now is when we're deciding to take away the few legal protections we actually have. I wanna throw back to May of this year. when We learned a little bit more about how stark the future looks when it comes to these sorts of animals continuing. A May UN biodiversity report found that species of all kinds, mammals, birds, amphibians, insects, plants, marine life, terrestrial life, are disappearing at a rate, quote, tens to hundreds of times higher than the average over the last 10 million years, and it's due to human activity. In all, it warns, as many as 1 million species are now at risk of extinction if we don't act to save them. That number includes 40% of all amphibians, 33% of all corals, and around 10% of all insects. And in particular, I would just like to mention, as we often do, the plight of bees, where effectively bees and uh, butterflies too inside of California have seen their numbers for some species decrease by 80 to 90 or more percent in just a decade or so. This is a huge issue, it's a local and state issue, it's a federal issue, it's a world issue. And to the extent that the federal government can do anything to affect the future course of our biodiversity, whether American or across the planet, we should be working to strengthen these protections, not giveaways to corporations looking to make a little bit of short term profit at the expense of a species that might have lived on our planet for literally millions of years. It could be going again, as I alluded to in the last break, the way of the dodo so that some corporation can develop a new pesticide or something. I mean, it's like joking because it's a defense mechanism against how horrendous this is, but this is a serious issue. We have got to get Donald Trump and his cronies out of the EPA, out of all of these organizations while there's still time to save these species. Here on the Damage Report, we talk a lot about the big banks and their ways of getting rich off the poor. They saturate the market, but there are other options. And I've got info on a socially and environmentally responsible financial institution that has no ATM fees, gives you cash back on every purchase. They even commit 10% of their earnings to charity. It's called Aspiration, and if you go to aspiration.com slash TYT to sign up, you'll get these perks and that's more money to spend or save or to spend, just treat yourself.